Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. I believe I could give J.D. Sumner a run for his money tonight. <laughs> Once again, so glad to be home. So glad to be home. I look around this congregation and I see others that have made it home since I was here last. You didn't hear me. I said, I see some more that have made it home since I was here last. Praise the Lord, Sister Joy. Amen, amen, amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that Sister Joyce Wilson is still with me. She looks a whole lot better than I do. She's probably a whole lot better than I am. But uh, I found her uh, right out of a cotton patch in southeast Missouri. And I showed her the way out because that's what you have to do to Missouri folks. It is the show me state. And uh, uh, if she'll just hang with me, she'll just stay with me a, a, a another few days. January the 6th, we will have been married 45 years. <clears throat> I'm proud of that. I'm really proud of that. And, uh, God gave me a good, a good, good, good wife. And, uh, she's a precious saint of God. When folks ask her all over the country, they said, do you sing? She said, no, I cook and clean. <clears throat> But even in the temple and in the tabernacle, they had to have folks cleaning up stuff, right? And she's been a good cooker and a good cleaner, and uh, she does make me look good. When I, when I get to walk around with her in, in conference meetings or in malls, I try my best to square my shoulders back because ain't nobody in there got a wife that pretty. I know that right. Honey, you can pay me later. You can give me 20 bucks after service. Well, I know you're standing. God bless you. Pastor Voskis, Bishop Wilson, we're happy to be here. Thank you all for letting me be here. Already a powerful move of the Holy Ghost, and, and uh, you've got people in here that could preach circles around me. Brother Tony Carson is here tonight, and Brother Wilson Murphy is here tonight, and all that. Uh, 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 what's his name down here on the third row? Austin Hughes is here tonight. I wish I could have preached that good at 21 or 20 years old. What a little man that is. Amen. Now, I'm sorry if I didn't mention your name. I don't know everybody here. A lot of, a lot of brand new people. In 2 Samuel chapter 16, 2 Samuel chapter 16. I sort of argued with the Lord this evening. Uh, we didn't get into a fuss, you understand, because uh, <clears throat> I knew he had win anyway. But I, uh, I didn't really think this is what I wanted to, to minister tonight, Sister Kim. But uh, I feel led of the Lord to do this. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse number 20. 2 Samuel 16 and 20. I hope I gave the right scriptures to the folks at the back. Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Samson, or Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he hath left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy father. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house. Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. 
And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled, I want you to listen to this verse, which he counseled in those days was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. He was so good at counsel. He was so slick at counsel that folks would say, man, that's, he, he's speaking right out of the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Uh, a few more verses, if you don't mind. 2 Samuel 17, starting with verse 1. Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night. And I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed and will make him afraid. And all the people that are with him shall flee. And I will smite the king only. And I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as if all returned. So all the people shall be in peace. And the saying pleased Absalom well. And all the elders of Israel. With the Lord's help tonight, I want to preach a message with this title, The Hill of Evil Counsel. The Hill of Evil Counsel. God bless you as you're seated in the house of the Lord. The city of Jerusalem is situated on, on or around at least seven different hills. Those hills are Mount Zion, the Temple Mount, Ophel, Bezitha, the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Ascension. And finally, the hill that I am preaching about tonight, the hill of evil counsel. When David was king of Israel, his son Absalom had a meeting with Ahithophel, who was one of David's chief counselors. Ahithophel gave Absalom convincing counsel that caused him to rebel against his father, usurping the throne that God had given David. And this event ultimately caused the hanging death of Absalom. When we know his hair caught in the branches of an oak tree when he was fleeing from the army of David. The evil counsel was given to Absalom by Ahithophel, whose name literally means brother of folly or brother of foolishness. Ahithophel literally means brother of folly or brother of foolishness. Yet he spoke as an oracle of God. When he spoke like E.F. Hutton, everybody listened. The place where this council was given was on the south side of Jerusalem, across the Hinnom Valley, on a hill literally called the Hill of Evil Council. 1,052 years later, another man stood on the very same hill 
and took counsel with the chief priests to sell out his master and lord for 30 pieces of silver. It is historically believed that the hill of evil counsel, which happened to be about three quarters of a mile from Golgotha, is where Judas made his bargain with the chief priest for Jesus Christ. <coughs> now, Jesus is listed in Matthew chapter 1 as the son of David, the son of Abraham. And just as David was sold out by his own son, after listening to foolish advice on the hill of evil counsel, so also was Jesus betrayed by Judas, one of his own sons in the gospel. One of his own chosen disciples, Judas did this after he listened to and agreed to the foolish bargain with the chief priest, where? On the hill of evil counsel. I come tonight with an assignment. I directly feel from the Holy Ghost an assignment. And I've come tonight to preach that the influence of the hill of evil counsel is still very prevalent in our world today the voices of our own brothers of folly the voices of our own brothers of foolishness our own Ahithophels if you will are causing many a good man many a good woman many a good young person to give heed to the advice that is found on the hill of evil counsel. The influence of the hill of evil counsel is so strong that once you lend your ear to it, once you lend an ear, its advice is hard to reverse. The, the effect of that advice is very hard to reverse. You know why? You can't unhear things. Just as quickly as you cannot unsay things. I, I've always wondered how it was that people thought they could just say anything and everything at any time in any situation. I thought that until I pastored a little church up about two hours north of here. Had a fine young man, a great member of our congregation, but any time he felt like it, he went in mouth first. He'd bust through the door talking. We worked with him, and I told him, I said, now look, brother. I said, I know you've got a right to say it. There's no law against you talking. I said, but just because you can say it doesn't mean you need to. You can't unsay things, and you can't unhear them either. If you ever lend an ear to the counsel of the foolish, you better understand that that counsel will cause an effect in your life. Oh, uh, hallelujah. The influence of the hill of evil counsel says it makes no difference how you believe. We're all going to heaven together. You go your road, I'll go mine, and we'll meet up in heaven together. 
The old doctrine was all roads lead to Chicago. But I want to tell you something. There's some hills and there's some roads in West Tennessee that I've been on that do not lead to Chicago. That's the way we learned to say it down here. It was Chicago. And I want to tell you something else. There's some roads in North Mississippi that don't lead to Chicago. It makes no difference how you believe. We're all going to go to heaven together. It doesn't make, it, make any difference if you obey the word of God, the truth of the word of God. You believe what you want to, preacher. I believe what I want to, and we'll all get to heaven together. The hill of evil counsel says, the hill of evil counsel says, you don't have to listen to, you don't have to subject yourself to any spiritual authority. Mm, you can lend your own, you can lead your own lifestyle. You can obey your own set of guidelines. You can follow your whatever path you wish to follow as long as you are kind, as long as you are loving, as long as you know how to smile at folks and open the door for the elderly. As long as you are helpful to your fellow man, it doesn't matter really what you believe. That's foolish counsel. The voices from the hill of evil counsel are foolish voices. I said they are foolish voices. They are voices that spawn rebellion. The worst thing you could ever do is rise up against your man of God. The worst thing you could ever do is entertain a thought of rising up against your man of God. The voices from the hill of evil counsel spawn rebellion against authority. The hill of evil counsel gives birth to the Absaloms who are all about their own authority, who are all about their own agenda, the hill of evil counsel gives credence to those Judases who are more concerned about their own personal greed and fulfillment than they are the plan of God and the will of God for their lives. I'm doing my best not to chase rabbits tonight. But... Any preacher worth his salt is going to chase a rabbit or two. Right? No doubt he was a fine warrior. He most likely fought valiantly beside the other warriors. But when the day of battle was over, when the spoils lay on the ground ready to be retrieved, Achan listened. Achan listened to the voices from the hill of evil counsel, the wedge of gold, the 200 shekels of silver. Well, these could buy, these could buy the kids some school clothes. You know, Johnny is about to run out of his shoes. The leather's worn down. His sandals are not conducive to playground activity. Uh, this 200 shekels of silver, I could use that. I could buy my children some shoes. I could buy a new sweater for little Susie so she'd have something to keep her warm when the cold snap comes. The voices from the hill of evil counsel. Huh. Oh, and by the way, this Babylonian garment, Babylonish garment, wow. Did it say Babylonian or Babylonish? 
Well, well. Y'all excuse me. I forgot my gun, but I do see a rabbit. Babylonish garment. Something that looks like, feels like, a little ish. A lot of folks like little ishes. Oh, I don't want to get too far from the Lord, but maybe it won't be bad if I just get a little world, a little world-ish. Huh? I'm not going to get worldly. Don't worry about me, Pastor. I'm not going to get worldly, but it, it, I saw something. I saw something hanging on the rack that I thought would look good on me. But I, I admit, I admit it might be just a tad world-ish. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You listen to counsel. There's a voice in your ear. I said there's a voice in your ear. The apostle Paul told one of the churches, he said there are, as it were, so many voices. You gotta be walking the chalk. You gotta be living daily in the in the plan of God. You've got to be missing no prayer meetings. You've got to be serving God to the best of your ability or you will, you will give heed, you will give heed to a voice that is evil counsel. Oh, don't you ever forget it. Don't you ever forget it. The advice, the influence, from the hill of evil counsel is strong. Oh, I'm, I'm strong enough to handle it. Huh? I, I think I can handle this. Don't worry about me, I can handle it. The command of the Lord God was for them to take nothing. Don't you take anything as spoil from the battle of Jericho. Don't take anything as spoil from the battle of Jericho. Why? Because it was a cursed place. And everything that was in Jericho was cursed as well. But the, but the voices from the hill of evil counsel were so loud, they were so convincing that Achan could not resist. I said Achan could not resist. He stole the wedge of gold. He stole the 200 shekels of silver and he stole the Babylonish garment and then he hid it right where his children live. He hid it right where his children lived. Oh, they'll be okay. My kids will be okay. You don't know what you're doing when you bring stuff into the house, when you introduce bad spirits to your kids. Oh, help me, Lord. I thought I was tired. It's just my voice that's tired. Oh, it won't matter. They're strong children. He hid the gold. He hid the silver. He hid the Babylonish garment in his tent. And don't ever forget it. Achan was not a bachelor. He wasn't a bachelor. He was a wife. Uh, he, he, he had a wife. He had children. He had a family. He had farm animals. I want to 
tell you how serious God is. We think God's just, you know, just sort of powder puff. We think God's sort of light, you know. He would never do anything that. When God told them not to stay, take anything from that battlefield, when God told them don't you dare take anything from the battlefield of Jericho, he meant it. He meant it so seriously that when it came time to punish the guy that did the stealing, God said just in case that thieving spirit should rub off on the wife, just in case the kids grow up and they say, well, nobody, nothing ever happened to daddy, just in case Rover or the pet little lamb or the she goat and the he goat and all the other goats. Just in case, God said, I'm gonna destroy everything. And you know what? God didn't burn them with fire. God didn't burn them with fire. He said to the people, he said, you take this family. You take these animals. You take these children. You take their tent. You take their bed clothes. You take their automobile. You take everything they've got and you drop it into this valley and then you stand on the hillside and you stone them to death. Cover them up with a pile of rocks. All because a man listened to counsel. He heard the wrong voice. He felt the wrong tug and he partook of the accursed thing. Well, let me tell you something, child of God. Be careful what you put your hands on. Be careful what you get your mind involved in. Be careful what you see with your eyes. Be careful what you hear with your ears because it might just be the accursed thing. Giving heed to the hill 